And now, this week's Iris Orchestra Music Minute, a weekly look at the many facets of music. Our host, Michael Stern, is the music director of Iris Orchestra and the Kansas City Symphony. What does being a conductor actually entail? And how did conductors as we know them today come to be? In the 16th century, during the great flowering of Renaissance vocal polyphony, it became necessary for one singer to keep time for the larger group so that the increasing complexities of each vocal part would line up correctly. When composers began writing music for multiple choirs to sing together, it was even more crucial to have one person to direct the time. This practice naturally continued in the Baroque era, but now large instrumental groups were needed to accompany ever more elaborate operatic productions. The leader of the orchestra, usually while playing a keyboard or the first violin part, would keep time and set the tempo for each recitative and aria. In the 19th century, the audience for public concerts grew, and concerts featuring large ensembles were very common. Often, visiting virtuosos or composers would lead the orchestra, bringing with them tricks of the trade they had gleaned from working with orchestras in other parts of Europe. This commingling of regional practices gradually contributed to both the elaboration and standardization of conducting practice. For my part, I'm not interested in dictating a performance from the podium, but rather creating a climate of pulse and breath and intent in which everyone on stage can do his or her best and feel a part of the extraordinary power that is generated by a group of talented musicians breathing life into one musical interpretation. That is the magic of orchestral performance. Michael Stern is the music director of Iris Orchestra of Germantown, Tennessee, and the Kansas City Symphony. Tickets and more information can be found at irisorchestra.org.